Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna show you how to do a pre-op inspection on a telehandler. Check this out. Hey everyone, today we're gonna go over how to do a pre-op inspection on a telehandler. Uh, now this is a CAT 943, uh, but really the way I go over these pre-ops, they apply to any type of equipment, uh, but I'll go over this one with you. As with all my videos, not an expert, not claiming to be, I'm gonna kinda of show you what I've learned, but also I hope you'll share tips and tricks of your own. And then finally with pre-ops, they're probably the most important piece of operating equipment. And I really like to go over these because I think a newer operators especially are a little bit intimidated. I'll stress this up front, I'm not a diesel mechanic, not claiming to be, and you don't need to be either. A lot of these things are just common sense, but it's much better to catch them before you operate that equipment for the day. So even if you just take a two to five minutes right before you operate and do a quick pre-op, it uh, can really save your butt uh, if you catch anything right there. So as you've probably seen with other pre-ops I do, I really break it into three pieces. The general walk around of the equipment, the compartment check, and then these, the operator's cab. Those are the three different pieces that I cover. Uh, and generally I run counterclockwise. I try and do the same thing every time just to have consistency. But again, there is no right or wrong here. So do what makes what you're comfortable with and just stick to that routine. Okay, so first for the walk around. Now the reason I do it this way, it really gives me two circles around the piece of equipment. One is the general walk around, then we'll go into compartments next. The reason I really like the walk around, that's my time where I'm not really touching anything. It's more looking at it from a big picture. Uh, I've seen this myself. Uh, I've done it and I've seen others do it where they get so focused on checking some of the small things that they might miss something that's just big and obvious, but because you're so focused on it. That's why I really like just the general walk around to look at it from a distance. Uh, I'd like to do counterclockwise, but again, not a rule here. Do whatever makes you comfortable. I'm going to start on the operator side of it. So what I'm always looking for, I start top to bottom, you know, looking if I see any obvious damage. So you're looking for, with the arm, are there any, wherever there might be welds, if there's any damage there, I'm looking for any obvious leaks, uh, anything that just sticks out. So if I start on this side, I'm looking on the telehandler, we're gonna look at our, our tires, see if there's any damage. Obviously, if you can check pressure on them, uh, I think a lot of operators would probably do that weekly, uh, but you can usually look at it and see if it looks like it's either damaged or if it's low, making sure all the uh, lug nuts are tight, secure, uh, making sure your planetary there, there uh, no damage, no leaking or anything from the center there. I'm gonna keep going around again, making sure the cab, there's no damage to the cab, the glass, things like that. As I'm walking, I'm also looking underneath the machine. This is where if there were anything behind the wheel there, uh, where there might be a leak, it's something that you can catch while you're walking around the machine. And then I'm still on this side, again, looking all the way up top to operator's compartment, making sure there's no damage there, and then checking the tire in the back. Lug nuts all look tight, doesn't look like we have any leaks from the center, and the tire, don't see any obvious damage, it looks like it's inflated to the appropriate uh, pressure. And then I'll keep coming around the back. Okay, now we're on back. This is where I'm looking on the inside of the tires for any damage, but also making sure I've got no leaks or anything from any of the hoses in here, uh, any of the connections. Uh, again, there's you can see the planetary and all the, the transmission, everything, the connections are in there. So I'm looking for anything obvious that sticks out. This is I'm not a diesel mechanic, but I can tell if something just doesn't look right. Then I keep coming around the back. This is where you're going to kind of be able to see down the uh, arm a little bit where the hoses, hydraulic hoses are. So I can look in there and see if they any damage, uh, any bulging in the lines. For hydraulic lines, you never want to try and uh, touch those by hand. They are under extreme pressure, so you would never want to do that in case they were to break. That could literally cut your hand. Uh, so you don't ever want to touch one of those hoses, just kind of looking at them. This is the time, too, when I'm around the back. I can look underneath, see if I see any obvious damage. The engine uh, for a telehandler is actually on the kind of passenger side, on the right side. So I can look under that side to see if I see any obvious leaks. Coming around this side, looking behind the tire there, all the connections, seeing if I see any leaks, anything obvious. Making sure all the pins, the connections where the boom arm is connected. Again, on both sides, you're looking at that. And then coming around to the other side of the cab, my exhaust system, making sure that's intact. Again, now we can see a big picture of the arm up here, seeing if there's looks like any damage to any of the welds or anything. Uh, the hydraulic cylinder that's on the top there, all the lines. The engine compartment is here. This is what we'll check next, but we'll keep going around. 
Really easy to see if there's any leaks or anything underneath where this machine was sitting. So if it's been sitting here for a while, this is a time where you can see if there's any obvious leaks or anything like that. Here the front then, same thing with the tire up front, same thing as what I've checked on the others. Any damage, looks like it's properly inflated. All the lugs are on. Doesn't look like any leaks from the center there. And then I'm coming around the front to look on the inside of that one. Then once I've looked at the front, I see no leaks. Everything, I'm also looking up here then, all the welds. Seeing if there's any, right now, the, if I were to want to extend this out, see everything, but you can generally look and see if there's, was there any debris or any uh, thing that went into that arm there, if there's any obvious damage. Uh, you've got your cylinder uh, up top there, but I can kind of look at any damage here, and then I'm looking at whatever my work tool is. Making sure all the pins, this is our connection for the coupler, for the forks. My hydraulic lines here, cylinder there, and again, continuing to come around the front. And then from the front, same thing, I'm looking, first of all, my work tool, whatever I have on, we have forks on here, seeing if there's any obvious damage to the forks, where the connections are there, anything that sticks out. I can see down the entire arm here, if this arm obviously had any, uh, well, this is where I'd probably see if there were any cracks or any curvature to that main boom arm or anything in here that could show some signs of damage or a cracked weld, something like that. Keep coming around. This is where I can also see underneath from the front side. So this is where I come down, I'm gonna look underneath, see if I see any damage, any leaks, anything like that. Come over on this side, looking inside, all my connections there, bolts through, no leaks. And then I'm looking on the inside of this front tire. All the connections, no leaks. Okay, next part is compartments. Uh, before I do the main compartment here, I do want to mention on that walk around, when I, on the other side, there are hydraulic fill. There's always going to be an indicator on the outside of the machine. The cat's actually right behind the operator's compartment. So checking that too, it's an hour, it's kind of a glass there. You can make sure you got hydraulic fluid. Everything else, uh, these machines are relatively simple ones. Everything's in one place. So I'm going to check the engine compartment. Uh, the other thing when you're looking from the outside is making sure the screen, so you have the radiator and everything on the back here, and then there's an air intake on the front, uh, making sure those are clean, there's no damage there. Once I open that compartment, again, I like this also talking about big picture, I just like to look from a look at everything and see if there's any obvious damage. You'll be surprised. Some things can just stick out that they don't look right, uh, but nothing really sticks out on this one. Then I'm going to start from the back here. So I'm looking, this is all the cooling for the machine. So I'm looking at these fins to see if there's any obvious damage, if there's any debris in here, anything blocking it, anything leaking. The hoses coming out of this, but there's looks like no damage to the cooling components. Same thing on the fan blade here. Uh, you can see on that, see if the damage to the fan, anything like that. And then I'm checking the belts. All belts and hoses, you're making sure there's not any obvious wear, tear on them, uh, any, if there's any hoses that are bulging, uh, loose connections, things like that. You can see it there. Same thing with the overall engine. Seeing any of these, uh, any hoses, cables, anything looks loose, anything like that. For the cat machine, the coolant fill is up on top of the cooling. Uh, so right up there, there's a gauge. I can see on there that it's at the appropriate level. And then coming across to the uh, air filter. So the main air intake's here. There is a little valve over here that I can check to see if there's a little red, it's got a, if it's occluded at all where there's not getting airflow, it'll be an indicator there. Uh, and there's usually a dump valve on the front of the air filter where you can clean that, see if there's any debris in there. And then you've got your fuel filter. This is generally, you'll have a filter if there's any looking for any water or anything that might be in the fuel that would separate there in the clear window there. And then the final thing would be just check the fluids. So the oil. Wiping it clean, looking at it, looks good. And then the transmission right here. And that looks good. So everything looks good there. The final piece is in the operator seat. So after that, I get in, when I open the door, making sure there's no damage to the door, the grab bars, the handles, everything that I'd be able to get in. Coming in, making sure seat belt works. 
And then from that, before I turn the machine on, just checking the controls, making sure they have free range of motion. The boots that are on the, the joystick, there's no damage, so there's not dust debris getting in there. Um, all the glass, everything's intact on the cab. And then on the, all my steering column, everything works, everything's moving, nothing broken, nothing obvious there. Uh, after that, I would turn it on, one click over. That's where I'm gonna see if there's any indicators for anything that might be wrong. And then I would fire it up. Generally, I fire it up and then I just let it idle for you know a few seconds. This is where if I hear anything that doesn't sound uh, right, that I may need to look back in the compartment. Once I've checked everything there, final thing, making sure lights, turn signals, anything like that is operational. But then we're good to go. I do say once you get started there, that's where your final check as you're driving to make sure you got free range of motion out of the controls. There's no issue with the hydraulics at all. But that's the end of that pre-op inspection. Okay, and that's how you do a pre-op on a telehandler. Again, I hope you guys enjoy that. If you have comments, tips, tricks yourself on how you do one, please comment below. I do want to thank Doug Speedling Construction here in Hastings, Minnesota. They allowed us to use one of their telehandlers to shoot this video. We'll link to them down below. Thanks a lot, you guys. We'll see you in the next one.